my convenes and welcome to a new episode of Discovering DuckTales 2017! Or at least for now. Until it becomes 2018. Maybe we should just call it the reboot. Still trying to get that down. <laughs> anyway, today the episode I'm going to be watching is The House of the Lucky Gander. The sixth episode of the first season, which was, amazingly enough, actually aired... This is one of a chunk of episodes that actually was aired in the proper order. Um, its production code is 107, which comes after the Beagle Birthday Massacre slash Breakout, which was 106. And the episode that was episode number 5 is Terror of the Terrafermians, which isn't until, like, it, it's not for, let's see, 107, so 108, 109, 110. So it's not for three more episodes... What the heck, Disney? <laughs> Just air them in order. Air them in the proper order. I don't care. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, as I was saying, today is the House of the Lucky Gander. And, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what this episode shall bring. Because, honestly, I have no freaking clue. So, let's get right into it. In three, two, one, go. Uh-oh. Hey, $20! Aww. <laughs> Thing, Mr. McD. I was just gonna swing over and visit an old girlfriend from these parts. See, she's had some problems with the local crime family. Yes, fine, whatever, whatever! Branching story arc. Z. Branching storyline with Launchpad. He always sees me in Greece. The same in this blasted place. They tried to trap you here, so you'll spend all your time and money on cheap thrills. Is this place like a labyrinth? Better than that. Yeah, we need. Or are there more portals? Tigers. Oh, yeah. Where did God. you come from? And more importantly, did you stare them in the eyes? They won't kill you, or does that make them want to kill you faster? <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's the deal here? Good God! No. That's not even being unlucky. That's just being stupid. I'll need a room with a personal sauna, poolside view, and a distraction. A what? Chicken <laughs> is always by the exit. Thanks for the help. Here, and that's why I called you for help. What? Why didn't you just tell us? Yeah. Because I find out. That oh. Hi. So that's why the panda looked angry. Man, I'm really sorry about this. No, you're not. Okay, that's what it is. If he loses, then he's stuck there forever. Since to give up before, why start now? Aww, Louis being nice. It's weird, a little bit. Oh God. What do we do? Three, two, one. Oh God, that was fast. <laughs> Whoa, launch pad. What happened to you? That's right. Uh, what happened? Uh, tourist stuff. Goodbye, Ziggy. Wherever you are. One of the most annoying characters ever. one of the simplest yet best endings to an episode yet. Just... <laughs> just the, the cricket. That's it. That, that's it. Just the, the cricket singing. 
the thing that they started the entire episode going to see and it <laughs> God. okay all right so questions about this episode lots of questions lots of good things um got yeah, not really anything negative I might come up with something as I'm talking, but as it is, I got, I got nothing negative to say about this episode, except maybe Gladstone. He's just really annoying as a character. I do like the way that they played the whole uh, what's going on and just made it seem like he was being super arrogant. But, well, I mean, he was being super arrogant. But, yeah, maybe... Maybe Gladstone's the one actual negative thing about this episode, but the episode wouldn't happen without him, so whatever. I'll try and formulate more of a thought as I go along. Anyway, let's get into the episode itself, starting with really just the ending, the golden, the golden cricket. <laughs> Again, it's what we started the episode off with. And Scrooge is talking about how, you know, when the golden cricket sings, when you when you hear its song, it's like it can an potentially answer, you know, some of the greatest questions of our time. Like, what is the meaning of life? And I'm paraphrasing, obviously. And then it ends with just the, it's a regular cricket that's gold in color. And everyone is exhausted, slash possibly bored. <laughs> and Scrooge is just... <laughs> Okay, we can go now. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that was an awesome little plot point there. I, I loved it. it. It was a great thing to start on, a great thing to end on. Again, just the, one of the most simple, perfect endings to an episode. Now, Gladstone himself. Let's try and talk about some positive aspects, if that's possible. Um, I think it's mostly just the past that Gladstone and Donald have there. So, wait a second, actually, is, is Gladstone Donald's brother? I'm going to have to look that up because I can't remember exactly. Is Glad, I'm, hold on a second. Okay, he's his cousin. I guess just the flashbacks for some reason made me think that maybe, and because they were referring to him as uncle, I guess I thought that maybe Gladstone Gander, wait, that wouldn't make any sense because their last name is Duck and Gander. Okay, fine. I'm just being dumb then. Uh, obviously, okay. So he's Donald's cousin, which it just, I guess makes just the whole uncle thing a little bit confusing on my end, but whatever. So, Gladstone, growing up around the same time as Donald, and clearly Gladstone always got the lucky end of the stick, and poor Donald, poor Donald, always got the short end of the stick, he always drew the short straw, always got run over by boulders when Gladstone stepped out of the way at the right time. I don't know, it seemed reasonable to me to say at the time, but... Yeah, just Gladstone in general. Let's let's go ahead and dive into it. I kind of loathe him as a character just because he's very one note. So he's just entirely his deal is he's lucky. Great. And I mean obviously Scrooge doesn't care for him, Donald doesn't care for him. He's family, but God he's insufferable. <laughs> And I think, I guess that's why I don't like him. He's just insufferable. It's like, yeah, he couldn't tell anyone because Lou High, or however you pronounce the name, um, would find out, whisper it in their ears. Whisper it. Just say something to Donald while he's screaming. I mean, regardless, they were going to find out anyway. And there was the whole mystery as to why did you call us here? Because his reasoning didn't make any sense. I don't know. It's yeah, Gladstone Gander is just a annoying uppity jerk who I hate to say it, but had he 
been left behind and semi-cursed to a, uh, you know, be the slave of a luck vampire for all of eternity. Maybe it would have been for the best because now he's loose and that means he'll, he at least has a chance of appearing in a future episode and God, if he does, I hope that he has some form of character growth because he had none in this episode at all. Like the, and it's maybe it's for the best that he didn't just because of how insufferable he is. Because even after they got out and Webby made the quip of, maybe you're not so lucky after all. It's just like, well, actually, I might, maybe it is the fact that I'm super lucky, the fact that Donald won, and shut up! God. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. He has a chance of appearing in a future episode, and if he does, I will keep my fingers crossed for some form of character growth, for some form of character development, but I will not hold my breath. All right. So, moving on from Gladstone, Donald Duck, the unluckiest duck in the world, who also has one of the best quotes of this entire episode right at the beginning, as they're going in for a landing, which actually was a landing and not a crash for once, I think. I don't think they crashed. <laughs> We're all gonna die! I've wasted my life! It's so out of nowhere. Like, I, I, that can't be the first time he's been in a plane with launch pad flying, is it? I swear there's been another episode where launch pad's been flying and Donald was in the plane. Maybe I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, then maybe that would explain it because of how launch pad flies and lands. But... <laughs> Yeah, it, just, it seems like a weird thing to say, at least if it's not the first time. But anyway, regardless. Yeah, poor Donald was a great character in this episode. Like, I possibly, I, actually, I think definitely my favorite character just because of what all he goes through. And really, Donald can steal the show most of the time, as long as you have closed captions on, because dear God, I tried watching one of the episodes without closed captioning uh, with Jill the other night and uh, yeah she doesn't care for captions she couldn't understand what he was saying and I couldn't understand what, I couldn't understand what he was saying and I had seen the episode with captions <laughs> so yeah unfortunately with Donald you kind of need the captions on but <laughs> it's he gets the he gets ragged on all the time and I mean compared to Uncle Gladstone uh, you know the kids think that you know Donald just isn't as cool and you know he just he his luck is horrible and unfortunately for him is like he's extremely stubborn and prone to anger too and short-sightedness because at one point or several points through the episode his bad luck also just kind of turns into being dumb. The biggest point of which would be when he was trying to guess the number of fingers. 27? Over and over and over again. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. If it had been a duck, behind that booth. I don't remember what animal it was, but if it was a duck and like holding up like a certain number of feathers. I don't know how many like feathers a typical duck actually has on its wing, like on the tips of its wing, but let's say that that rounds up to about, you know, 27 or 28 on both hands. If it was a realistic duck and it would have been even more funny if Gander, or I'm sorry, if Gladstone had said 27, and it was a, was a realistic duck that held up, like, you know, that many feathers, that would have been hilarious. Instead, the whole 27 thing and Donald getting increasingly angry was just kind of dumb. And, in fact, let's say that's my second annoyance of the episode. They did a good job of playing on the bad luck and just how horrible things got at times just for sheer bad luck. 
But then they made, again, they just made it where Donald was just being dumb, and that wasn't funny. Uh, like, like, maybe it was funny the first time. Like, you know, he's guessing these different numbers, and then all of a sudden, 27. And then he goes back to, like, actual numbers and keeps getting it wrong. That would be one thing. But it's just like he kept doing it over and over and over again, and I don't know. Maybe it's just, again, where that show is primarily aimed toward kids, and I'm not. However young, I try to be at heart. <laughs> um, but it just wasn't funny after the first time. But anyway, regardless, Donald was a great character, and I loved how Scrooge, I mean, he used Donald, but in a very smart ploy, considering what Luhai was, a luck vampire, which I'm going to get to him in just a second. And obviously you leave the most unlucky being, at the very least for miles, um, with that vampire, and that vampire is not going to be feeling so good, which clearly happened very quickly. Like, I don't know if perhaps there's sort of a, uh, um, no, th there can't really be a time loop kind of deal or like time slows down in there because Launchpad still arrived on time. So yeah, I don't know. Regardless, Donald was awesome in this episode with that mild annoyance of, you know, just the way they wrote that scene with the finger guessing. That was dumb. But moving on from there. The biggest mystery of this entire episode. Launchpad going to find Ziyi. Who the heck is Ziyi? Why didn't we get at least some glimpses of what was going on with Launchpad? I mean, the reason is obvious, because they want to make it a mystery, or they just want to make people like me who want to know what's going on with Launchpad really annoyed. I'm going, I'm guessing the second part there. <laughs> but also, where did the panda come from? Does Launchpad just have a panda now? Is it coming with them? What happened? Like, we're giving Launchpad being portrayed as just this lovable idiot. Emphasis on the idiot side, you know, in this incarnation of DuckTales. And all of a sudden, it's like he gets this amazing side story, presumably, that we don't get to see. Why? Why do you do that to me, Disney? Why do you do that to me, DuckTales writers? I'm very sad now because I want to know what happened there and I really really hope that even if we don't find out what happened on that visit I want to find out like I want to see what happens with Launchpad storyline after that because I like Launchpad and I want to know it's very selfish of me yes but I want to know what happened? What was going on? Why are you hiding it from us? Why are you being so mean? Anyway, all right, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna wander on that any longer, but seriously, what's up with the panda? And is there going to be a panda in the show now that kind of hangs on Launchpad's back? That would be interesting. <laughs> uh, Louie in this episode. Louie, I... Again, we actually did get some character growth from Louie. Um, I mean, we, we get character growth from a bunch of different characters throughout the show, and Louie had definitely had some growth in, um, what was it, The Great uh, Dime Chase. I think that was the name of the episode. ADD is fun. Um, but, you know, he goes from having, uh, having Gladstone as his role model, like just... Like, he wants nothing but to be with Gladstone. He wants Gladstone to teach him his tricks. And at the end, it's like he's completely disenfranchised with Gladstone. I mean, uh, one reason being, obviously, that Gladstone, very much being a complete jerk, just says, I don't need you, I need him. It's, <laughs> it's again, just a further sign of how horrible of a person slash duck, slash character uh, Gladstone is. I feel like Gladstone is a last name for some reason. That's why I keep getting tripped up. But, yeah, Louis uh, 
observes what all is going on there and he's the one who gives Donald the, that inspiring speech at the end is like you know you've all uh, paraphrasing you know you've always kept going no matter what why are you gonna stop now and it's like Louis sees like you know the truth it's like you know of how much Donald tries no matter what and maybe that's the lesson in the 27 thing I still feel like it could have been done better if he just kept guessing instead of doing 27 over and over and over. But regardless, yeah, I really liked Louie's growth here. And actually, to go back to Donald Duck real quick, one thing I forgot, because again, ADD. Um, after he got that inspiring speech and Donald once again channeled his furious rage, uh, Donald is amazing. Like, when, when he gets angry in this show, with the exception of, like, that first episode where he got stuck to a table and then the wall with the stapler, like, his anger is a superpower. It turns him into just this force of destruction. The first time we saw it was with the Beagle Boys, and then this time uh, with them, you know, beating Gladstone and winning the challenge by doing a sonic scream to destroy the ghostly or not real tiger and then just slamming through every bit of that uh, was it a pachinko machine maybe I think that's right <clears throat> maybe it's supposed to be a pachinko machine anyway yeah just Donald Duck and his superpowers I want more I hope we get more. I have no doubt we're going to get more. <clears throat> so, moving on from there. The Maze Casino and Toad Luhai, aka a demon, slash a luck vampire, and just a very strange character. Although I will say, I like what the, I like what they ended up doing with the character because it's completely unexpected. Now obviously something is up because all throughout the episode um, Gladstone keeps getting those weird looks like from the panda and then when he actually comes across Luhai it's like you know weird stares like that. But the idea that the entire hotel slash casino is this fake conception of magic like nothing in there was real none of the patrons literally nothing except for Lou High, his cards and then the ducks and Gladstone and Vendor Duck there's no reason for me to be over specific, overly specific here <laughs> but I just really found that entire concept super interesting and it also raises some questions like the people that were in there like was it literally just none of them were real they were all there for show for the people like for Gladstone to at least have him stay remotely sane while being there or was it because uh, Scrooge and the kids were there to keep up a visage, 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 visage whatever the word is um, for them, regardless, just that entire concept is really cool because I mean, I it was it was clearly a labyrinth, the entire hotel section, but you know it had me tricked. It's like you know, well we had the portals before with uh, Mount, uh, I forget the name now. <laughs> anyway. Um, we had the portals there, what if this place also has portals? But nope, it ended up being the realm of a luck vampire slash demon slash deity. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just really cool. I like the way they did that. I'm talking too long about certain things. Let's continue. So moving on from there, like one thing that I definitely started to catch on to was this whole concept of being lucky versus unlucky. Um, and, you know, obviously it wasn't working out well for Donald because of his bad luck, but Gladstone was 
not necessarily increasingly, but just sort of consistently unnerved whenever he won after maybe that first time. It's like, like the luck just keeps working out for him and it reaches a point where he's just kind of like, hmm. Like there's just those little subtle non-verbals that they did well in the through the animation that shows that okay something's not right here. It's like he keeps winning, so why is he annoyed? Why why isn't he so happy about it? So obviously we ended up getting the reveal of you know Blue High being the luck vampire, and I it was a really interesting concept. Again, I don't care for Gladstone. I will not be upset if we never see him again throughout the entirety of this show. But utilizing him, a, a very unlikable character as being the lucky one, <clears throat> really made for an interesting back and forth between poor Donald and him. And then of course, again, that led to the challenge and everything was awesome. Everything was awesome! I don't know why I sing that. <laughs> but I guess one of the last things that I really liked about this episode was Scrooge. Now, Scrooge was very, you know, narrow-minded. He wanted to get out of there, he wanted to go see the Golden Cricket. And even... Uh, it seemed like there was a point where he finally got worn down. Like, the kids were distracted with food, um, Louie and Donald were off with Gladstone, he didn't know what was going on with them. <clears throat> and it did seem like, there again, there was a point where he just gave up, because Lu Hai kept trying to get him to stay, you know, so he could obviously leech off of uh, Scrooge's luck. But, he was again just being super clever, in that he knows that the, you know, the check-in is always right by the exit, which was super smart. <laughs> super smart of him. So yeah, the, that whole thing, and then Scrooge knowing that, on his end at least, you know, it's not luck, it's like it's hard work. And obviously in this case, luck probably would have played into it a little bit as well, because if it had been Scrooge who had gone into the challenge, it would have been him versus Gladstone. But obviously that's not the way it panned out. <laughs> I, I was admittedly a bit sad to see that Scrooge had to take the back seat to Donald on that, but because of just how awesome Donald was throughout this episode, again leading into just his psychotic rage superpower, it worked out in the end. It was just, I I want to see more clever Scrooge. It's like, clev Scrooge is very clever most of the time, often very selfish, but when we get good moments with him, they're really good. Like, he's extremely smart, he's a great adventurer, and I... I, I understand that the episodes are going to focus more on certain characters at times as opposed to the whole group. But the fact that David Tennant voicing, is voicing him and also just this incarnation of Scrooge is really cool. I want more of Scrooge. I really legitimately do. And I know I'm going to get more of him because there's, what is it, 22, 23 episodes per season. <laughs> and I just, I, I, I want more of Scrooge, and I hope that we continue to get more of Scrooge. <laughs> but it, again, anyway, yes, I understand fully you all don't have to keep explaining to me. I get it that there are going to be episodes that focus more on certain characters than others. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be sad when, there's, when certain characters aren't there. I will just try to keep mind that I shouldn't comment on it as much because it can be annoying for some people, even if the character not being there is annoying for me. Kind of like Launchpad not being there, or at the very least us not seeing his side of the story. Why didn't we get to see his side of the story? I'll stop. <laughs> but okay. So yeah, this episode overall was great. It had a few minor annoyances of mine um, that really didn't matter in the long run, and it was a lot of fun. I just, again, hope we never see Gladstone again. If we do, I hope that he grows up a bit and is 
less how he was in this episode. But regardless, excellent, excellent episode overall. And I want to hear your thoughts on this episode as well. So please leave your thoughts on this episode down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about what I've had to say. I mean, I know I've been a bit back and forth, and yes, I know the ADD can make things a little bit weird at times when I do my reviews. Hopefully you're, some of you are used to it at this point. But I want to know your thoughts on about what I had to say. Is there anything you disagreed with? Do you like Gladstone? And if so, why? Like, why do you, why do you like him um, as a... Whereas I don't. Because maybe you can help me understand why he is a good character. Or maybe you agree with me and he's a jerk and should never be on the show again. And if so, I will not, you know, I, I won't oppose people just saying I agree with you because I'm kind of a dork like that. Anyway, but still, I am interested to hear your all's thoughts on it. Any other quotes that stood out to you? Um, any other moments that stood out to you, really? Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Coming up next, we will be watching The Infernal Internship of Mark Beaks. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and yeah, that's right, the infernal internship of Mark Beaks. Uh, not gonna lie, the word internship is not one I expected to pop up um, in a title for this show. So, yeah. Interested to find out what's going to be going on there because again we had the house of the lucky gander and I think the actual Hotel slash casino was the house of the lucky fortune. So I like the little play on words there. So Interested to find out who Mark Beeks is and what this infernal internship is But before we close out everyone if you would like to see episodes like this ahead of time anywhere from a few days to possibly a week or more before they go public on YouTube, uh, you can sign up to be a patron over at patreon.com slash Media. Link in the description down below as well as at the end of this video. And for a dollar a month, uh, you'll have early access to these episodes, again, before they go public on YouTube. Um, for discovering DuckTales as well as, as, bleh, as, well as other shows um, before I have them go public. Um, I am working on a bit of a backlog We'll see how that goes, but I am getting better at the very least. So yeah, if that interests you at all, go check it out. If not, thank you all the same for watching this video. Thank you for watching any of the videos you have. And uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because, uh, yeah, it, it just blows my mind that there's so many people that enjoy watching my videos. And before I get too mushy, I'm going to end it here. So, until next time, everyone, for the Infernal Internship of Mark Beeks, I'm Papa Ken. See you in the next video.